Hey Internet, Sal Good Sam here. And uh, this process pod, I'm going to do some drawing and some stuff. Uh, but first, I thought I'd do some cartooning. This is a, an officially cartooning practice sketchbook. Nice, smooth pad. You're seeing some drawings from my period of trying to learn a thing or two from doing studies of Watterson's work. Oh, and that was a fun one. I did not nail it, but it was also trying to get a bit of uh, mid-period brushy Schultz. Uh, some Sassavetes. There's a uh, little George Harriman. I made him a bat because it was Halloween when I did it. I think I like that Snoopy. The Snoopy came out good. I used a, a brush, I believe, but I was trying to go for the uh, late period kind of marker drawn stuff. A little comic from. Uh, the pattern exercises and alphabets, I think. Nib. Portrait of the lovely Angela Murphy. So the random doodles of just faces that I made up as I went. I kind of evolve into personality that goes. So little diary comics, uh, exercise, pattern exercises, demos for brushes and stuff. It was actually done for my class, and then I scribbled on it some more later after scanning it. Uh, studies for Old Dracula, which is published now, but the, the print version is in limbo because of the COVID and everything, and there were complications. Some portraits of people on the street, uh, a doodle rose, uh, a moon being held up in dance pose by a cow, lady with an awesome afro, and a guy who kind of looks like if the spy versus spy dudes retired and became Florida, like, uh, old Florida retirees. That's that's supposed to be me at one point when I had a big beard. Uh, more, I believe this is a felt tip brush pen. I forget which one. Did I remember to write it down? When I'm paying attention, I write down I did not. I did not see it. Doodles. Guy in a chair. I don't remember what that was about. This is a, a shirt now, or printer stuff. I put up in Society6. A, a video on YouTube, and then I drew it and uh, put it up to get a shirt because my wife wanted me to. But then the family of the little kid in the video saw it and ordered a bunch. And that was cool. This is Craig Yo as Popeye. If you know who Craig Yo is, I don't think he's really that rude, but you know, I was, it's what I was feeling. That's what it got to go away. This is a garden. This will be in book two of Dream Life. Another design for the garden. Drawing of me making a didactic point. These are pieces of a, a comic I did about hanging stuff on clotheslines, uh, sketches of people in cafes, trying to capture moments. I call, I call it sort of a dynamic gesture study is the technique that I, I teach in my dynamic drawing class. I'm going to start doing, um, trying to work on uh, bit by bit, uh, formalizing uh, modules from dynamic drawing into things that I can teach in at, 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 uh, on uh, Patreon, on my Patreon. That's coffee with my finger. Doing a little values. Some lettering. I forget why. Gesture studies of dancers. That's part of dynamic drawing again, using actual, you know, in the perfect world, these are done at a dance school. I believe we're looking at it's AD, no, what is it? A cold dance home Montreal. It's a, uh, it's a Mo Montreal Modern Dance School. I forget <laughs> the French title. And it's the students are usually like senior students practicing for final uh, performances at 
the end of the year. And they're dancing around and we have to catch them. They don't pose for us. Just some made up doodly stuff playing with uh, these brushes. With some cheap Japanese brush pens I got. I don't really use much, but this was the first time I got this brush. I, I did some doodling on this page and just try to see what the what the line was like. It's pretty nice. I don't. It feels like it wouldn't age great, but it's like it's not refillable. Although you could probably pull this off and put ink in it. It's not supposed to be refillable. It's supposed to be disposable. But it's got a nice synthetic, very sharp, real bristle brush head. I think you know one of them is actually dried out, and I'm going to see if I can pop it, pop it open, and put ink in it. That's another drawing of, of Angela, and some doodles stuff mixed media I was talking to someone on on the Facebook page about coloring technique and practicing and mentioning I'm, I've got nothing against digital tools but I think it's best to study and learn with analog um, you learn more about texture and surface and what that brings to art and then that can in turn to in turn informs how you think about digital art so even if it's just for practice um, this is got the color marker, black ink. Um, I think this is the fabric Castells and the new the, those brush markers. There's actually those brush markers. It's the other colors, but then also pencil crayon, and and then as white is uh, white oak pens, but then smeared around afterwards by my finger. That's Angela from memory. She wasn't there, but I'm trying to just draw an impression of her. And that's a lobster and a bird skull that I then put eyeballs on. Phil, the shocked skeleton. Uh, I'll probably use that in a comic jam. Some early design work for the box, which I really like, but I kind of morphed away from. I might still use these designs for something, though. I like this guy. I show from the box, but it's a different character. Uh, that guy, too. That guy would be an interesting character. I think I know where. I think I know what I'll, where I'll use them. But they're also just, like, too insane to draw for a character that's going to appear a lot. So I have lots of pages in here, and I was going to draw something. But there's some more at this end. Because I open up and draw on whatever side I'm on. Little pattern exercises with a... It's looking like a kind of chunky dryish brush cartoon for something that I didn't need to do a recipe that I wrote down for myself and illustrated a little um, journal comics from uh, May 2017 perspective study another perspective study same location those are for dynamic drawing that is a sketch of a bookshelf that I need to build hands that transform. This is Dracula stuff. Didn't end up seeing very much of it. I think, you know, I have there's a few things that I, I wish Dracula had been structured to have more time to develop in scenes. This is all nice. Empty pages. Good. Oh wait, no, I went that way already. So that's it. That's the end of the book. Um, so I'm not going to draw something. Uh, I want to let's use this section about so first these are really nice and I'm gonna just meditatively f do some feathering in this corner while I think a bit for a minute about the thing that I wanted to draw and if it doesn't sort of congeal then I've got some other things to do, and I'll switch gears to that. I was thinking about doing a little quick cartoon. Um, still thinking it out stage, so I'm going to go to some color erase. A little bit of a short stub. I need my holder. Um, Everything. 
on my wall back here, which is great that I haven't quite mentally habituated to it. Uh, that one? No, that's not it. And did I not put the hole in there? Max, what did you do with it? I like Savage's concept of like first priority organization, but I always I have such an improvised workspace that it's challenging to maintain. Oh, I'll just use that. Get me this started faster. Um, trying to maintain <laughs> a space so that first order availability of the things you need is always achieved. So I think I saw a meme. And I have a cartoon I want to draw, and I want to lay out two and possibly do a quick finish for one before working on a patron commission. And this is a drawing video, but it's also going to be a process pod. It might be a long one. The meme I saw, but I can't find now, had Will Ferrell in it. But uh, I'm going to just do my own thing. But I like the idea. I wish I could credit it, but uh, I'm just acknowledging the source for now until I can find it otherwise. I actually looked up, I was going to post the, the meme, but then I couldn't find it. I knew I saw it earlier. But it hasn't become, you know, like tagged and indexed in a way that I can semantically effectively search for it. Being too. So think about fire, and there's a scale to fire. There are large forms, and I need to plan some of that. Also, I'm doing this a little counterintuitively. Normally, I would have done for the composition I have in mind, I would have done the fire second. But I want to play a little fun with the, with the audience, so I'm revealing in reverse order information. There is a big fire, it's a smoky, low hanging. Low hanging clouds. I think I'll make it very cartoony because uh, I want to make this a quick and dirty fast cartoon both in the doing but also in like one of the things that you use to control how a cartoon or a comic is read is the the level of of resolution or you know like fine detail and most simplification in, for cartooning it has a a there's an efficiency side of it that is just about as a practitioner someone making comics if you want to turn out a lot of quick cartoons, like gag cartoons, or arguably if you're doing a monthly comic book, it's a similar workload, you want a style that's super stripped down and clean and easy to repeat without a lot of guesswork. That's why a lot of people also develop a very signature style and don't change up their work from book to book, like I foolishly probably do. I like the discovery and exploration. But it does backfire you sometimes. However, it has also left me able to do things like this pretty comfortably because I can sort of twist the dials and pick a, a, a very intentional like level of detail and or lack of realism, as the case may be.
So part of the reason I'm doing this meme is that I, I want to be able to post it, and I couldn't find it. But also I knew, you know what, I have to draw that because it's therapy. <laughs> you know, here's artists say that a lot, but it's true. I've been really kind of like distracted and bogged down and unable to get focused on one of a number of uh, outstanding art projects. I've been doing other things like we've recorded is it six six interviews now for sequential Sam Noir and I and I have to sit down and edit those and that's less of an issue I decided so we got we got a lot of them right away it was actually pretty easy to find people right now <laughs> um, but Not that people are actually not busy, but they are at home. <laughs> uh, pretty excited about the next interview. I need to read another book. So I'm glad I got put off a little bit because I still wanted to read that book. But so far we've talked to an old mentor of mine, um, a, a couple of editors, um, a publisher, uh, so a couple guys at a studio that everyone's very familiar with, a newcomer and sort of a, one of the last found, remaining founders. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the names and stuff now. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. It's all coming soon. I think what I'm going to do, so we have this new channel. You might want to go subscribe to it. I'll put it up in the, the, uh, information thing that I guess it's over way over that side far side way up look in the corner right now right now and that'll be like a link to that's gonna be on the ground I totally have to. I did actually just discover that Society6, where I have an account, has made masks available. So I turned on a couple of images and, laid, and, and, and oriented them. So you can now buy a face mask with my art on it. I've ordered one. It's coming. Oh, it's shameless. But you got to make your fucking living. And this is where we are with the freelance creative community. Using online tools and facilities to continue to try to have fun but also generate an income the teaching is going in execution well I think I'm getting the hang of teaching online it's also making me much more comfortable and confident about teaching students if I could, if I could just like I f always feel like it's it's partially me that I'm not prompting students enough when they're on Patreon. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's not entirely true, because I do. I just don't like to be a pest. I, I bug people a couple times individually, but then it's up to them to follow through. Um, it's just hard to like know when's too much, and then I kind of want to do it again, because I don't feel like you know if people are even going to stay if they don't use the amenities. Um, but I also get busy. Anyway, that's still an issue, but what is the classes at Sin? I think I'm getting very comfortable with the, the means and tools. Unfortunately, there's going to be fewer classes next. This semester I'm only teaching one, and next semester I'm only teaching one. So 
So I definitely need to increase my uh, private tutoring to try and keep up my income. I have not looked into, in case anyone's wondering, this the CERB, which I don't know. I'm in a messy situation for qualifying for that. I've been working regularly as a as a freelance worker at the school or contract worker. Well, not really in a contract. I'm not sure what you would call it. Invoicing. Um, and I've been freelancing as an illustrator for a long time. So I think I kind of qualify, but it comes right down to it. I'm just reluctant to. I never really like being on... Uh, I've been on UI and welfare over the years. And I'm not eager to return to unless I have to. So far, I haven't had to. I had a bit of money in the bank when things went sideways. Not like a ton, but I sold some IP last year and that left me with a bit of padding. In theory, had not there been a, a COVID and no future disasters, this never actually happens, unfortunately. That's a problem. Uh, but in theory, that would be savings. But my life has been, or my experience as a freelancer has been that there are ups and downs, ebbs and flows. I, I feel like that I've done enough work on my technical skills and my ability to deliver that work usually comes and I can demand a much better price for it now that I have a rep, assuming the work comes. I should say I can negotiate. I mean, I could technically negotiate it. I would probably ask more now, uh, as a rule, knowing what I've seen my, my agent is able to get. Num, oops. All right, let's switch it to depends because we're doing a smaller drawing. And then maybe, maybe this is a place for, like that one, but it's a bit old. Uh, which one of these is? That's pretty fine, yeah. That's a good medium. So these are a couple of, uh, that's a zebra and a kiritaka. Yeah. So fire. I'm doing cartoon fire. So what I, I tend to use is a variation on the flame pattern I learned looking at Hot Rod magazine in the 70s. It's too young to be to remember who, which artists, and right now I'm not feeling like I'm gonna come up with a lot of names without distracting myself from the work. But I learned a lot looking at those. My father bought them; he was a mechanic, so we had them around the garage. Most of my first comics were all, well, no, not all. Uh, my first classic American-style comics were from my father and they were actually his. And then I started buying my own, especially when I was visiting him, because we would go to the corner store and I'd, I'd buy some, and he'd buy some. Um, he also bought underground comics, so some of my first comics were definitely not meant for kids. Uh, and then my mother was a professional artist. She I think she had a bit of comics around, but she also had a, a growing collection of children's books that were really, she bought them for the art. Not so much because she had a kid, although I did get to read them, but she had a particular interest in the work and then later ended up, I was about eight, I was 
started working at Nelvana Studios, which was run by some old friends of my parents. Well, old relatively. They were all pretty old. Yep. What just fell down? Oh. Is that okay? Are you still hearing me? Yep. I see levels. Battery panel on my mic just fell off. So I'm, the kind of cartoon I'm going for for this panel, I'm trying to reduce the buildings to uh, the ideas of themselves. I was just saying, my, f my friend Richard Pace has started trying to live stream stuff. You should go check it out. He's a good artist. Uh, He's playing some music, and I used to like to play music when I was drawing all the time. I still like to, but I actually have increasingly come to enjoy working in silence. And then it becomes necessary when I turn on the camera, too. That's why I thought about it, because once it gets going, I have to start using the headphones. He sings along. That'll be one of the perks when you go watch his channel. You get to hear Richard sing along to his favorite classic rock songs. And there'll be some police. I'm pretty much sure there's some police. I don't remember all his musical tastes, but I remember he was a big police fan. We're going to have to interview Richard at some point on our show. That'll be interesting. By the way, for those of us, for those of those, for those of you who are interested, I'm not super like active on it, but I have a TikTok account. It's true. I enjoy scrolling through it, and I have taken a couple stabs at posting videos. One of my first kind of like genuinely popular ones was a t an even faster time lapse of the uh, uh, John 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 Lewis. Wait a minute, am I getting the name right? I think it's right. Uh, John Lewis portrait. Oh, Anomia, you betray me so. I've been 
one thing I've enjoying is seeing. I don't know if you've noticed. If you if you're around this channel a lot, you might have noticed I have opinions. I'm just a, just a wee bit a tad political. Those of you who have seen my Facebook know this too. Lately, as this comic addresses, it's been particularly distracting. But, I mean, my read on that is that naturally so. It, it should be, if you're not distressed in the, some of the things going on in the world right now. Something's wrong with you. So, it's okay if you're feeling a little bit fucking freaked out right now. Yep, you, you should be. Sorry if that's not reassuring, but false reassurances aren't much good to anybody. Do some bricks. It's a pattern I always recommend for people to learn. I'm doing it very small with a little felt tip here. If you screw it up a little bit, you just, you know, you fudge it, you figure it out. There's going to be a window there. I'm going to fill that in black. That works. There we go. I just need that regularity even for the scale of the, of the staggered pattern. And here I'm going to leave it a little bit open. Just do a couple. Done. Done! Don't overwork it. All right. What am I going to do? What's my going to be a treatment for the dark I think I want to do it's almost like rain just a slight angle to it this is something I talk about in class a lot ghost drawing making sure the geometry of the movement of your hand is feasible before attempting to execute planning planning ahead comes down to. I draw faster than I did when I was younger, but I draw slower, or I should say I draw drawings slower. So I, I technically draw faster than I did when I was young, but I draw my drawings slower because I, I've learned to, you know, measure three times to cut once. It's faster ultimately in many ways than making mistakes and correcting all the time, but because people actually have limited attention spans, you end up abandoning work less refined too uh, if you're constantly fixing more mistakes. And uh, makes sense. Just making sure that I'm making my plan work. I think I'll keep this very cartoony. I'm not worrying about going over these flame tips because that's what white paint is for. Just finish the form, get the nicest shape. I'm going to do lettering probably black and then white. We'll see. But yeah, in the name of keeping it simple, just right on the page. That should work. moving my hand so that this stroke is the crossbar to a vertical T that aligns with my wrist and arm. And now I can do a little diagonal. I 
that's a big enough area and I have to letter on it so I don't want to so I don't like that bottom line and I can fix that line very easily quiet so just take that up I wasn't joking about my art on a mask, by the way. Check it out. I'll put a link in the Society6 link thingy. So they're all pleated, and the only images we get from Society6 have it folded up. So you can't really see the art. But this one is a, a Wash Your Hands comic that I did a while back. And I'm going to do one that actually says, you know, something about wearing masks and why it's a good idea. <laughs> but I per turned them on just because I went and looked and see if they'd made them and sure enough they had uh, and they're actually pretty cheap so that's cool I ordered one to try it out I'll let you I'll, I'll bring it on the channel let you know how it comes out so it's such a small character Gonna do no mouth. It's not really me in that I'm I've not tried to draw an actual shape or something here. more of an avatar for what it feels like trying to be a creative in times of turmoil. This is a good pen for this job. I can do all the lines. It's one of the things I said to my students this week about working with brushes. And it's even more true of a of a hairbrush. Or a hairbrush? I mean, there's synthetic bristles in this and in, in this. But they can do incredibly fine lines because of that, especially when they have a good point. This can do not quite as an extreme range, but one of the advantages it has as well for cartooning is that that limited range can work for as a good constraint. Sometimes it's good to have limits on what you can do because it just gets you lets you get on with it. Do what you're cap what you're capable of doing, and this can sense it with the tools at hand. And then don't worry about what you can't. That's just uh, off off the table for now. So this this pen makes me work in a simpler, more graphic style. My friend Robert, Rupert Bottenberg. I'm not sure if that's 
like how he thinks about it but he's when he's cartoons he's developed a really graphic punchy look and I think a lot of it comes from using a, a big bold line and, and I think a lot of that is about the constraints he puts on his work to make the, the designing aspect crisp and simple I waited for that, but I just, it was bugging me. I'm going to do that one. I don't know. So there's some things I can do. Well, I don't know. One of my recent videos was about storytelling, um, so I, I called it How to Overcome Writer's Block, because that's often what happens when people get stuck trying to make decisions about their work. The, in the end, that's what my, some of my suggestions were. They were ways of externalizing the decision-making process, so you can just move on to the next stage and get to where you're able to have something to respond to, because editing when it comes to decision making and choices in art, it's the curation and editing of ideas that you have to work with that is um, frequently the easier thing to do than to generate raw. So I use story cubes sometimes to come up with ideas. And then before I had story cubes, I would do other things. I would write down notes when just external moments or ideas suggest themselves to me and then the notes sit around my sketchbooks and over time they they start overlapping and synthesizing and turning into ideas of my own and for my memoir it's a you know pieces of my life and then figuring out how to stitch that together into um short narratives because the whole thing i'm doing with bastard tale with my memoir is that it's not an ongoing like long story it's a, a sequence a series of short, you know, eight to ten page type stories, type things. There's no actual set page number, but that range. And then they can be collected, but I think I would intentionally publish them in, out of strict linear order and arrange them as the ideas, you know, in terms of figuring out how to present this stuff to make it interesting to a reader how the ideas suggest themselves. One of the nice things about doing it this way is so I'm publishing it in my personal anthology series. The next one's called Mind Engine. Um, I have two stories in Revolver Zero that you could get now if you wanted to. Right here, Revolver Zero. reach up and get it now for you you you'd have to go to the link in my description text and go buy it which I recommend you do there's digital options on Gumroad and you can also use Gumroad to order a print copy from me I use Kindle direct for fulfillment they do Good work. I liked it better when it was Create Space, i got to be honest. But, uh... It's still okay. It's alright. Yep. It was the Amazon monster all along anyway. I might... look into other options for print solutions. I'm definitely not 
even if I leave it on that site, I'm not obligated to only leave it there. I can publish other editions. But there has to be some sort of like hands-free at the very most, I get the order and pass the order on type thing. The only way I can manage self-publishing with my my time and means is with that kind of like almost drop shipping style model. All right, I've inked enough. What I need to do is reduce my purple. So if you've watched my channel, you've seen me do this before. I have a big wad of mutable eraser. And then I just roll it. Uh, I need to do this in a direction where I can hold the paper so it does not buckle and get damaged. And this avoids undue friction. Let's me get a lot of the color off the page. It's like a rolling motion. For the second pass, I'm now pushing it in more. So that's kind of pushing the, the needle material into the paper and then pulling away. And that way, I have much less ink reduction, like the lines don't go too too gray, and I don't smear any wet ink. So I'm just going to do a little bit of rubbing in this white balloon. I have a student right now, and they were talking about, you know inking and getting rid of your underdrawings and stuff and how it loses some connective tissue. And I think I, I know exactly what he means, and it's true, it can, that uh, if you, uh, you know, he's just blue, yes. Um, if you, uh, completely just go to ink, hard ink line which is a common thing to think people, a lot of people think of inking that way, just stark black and white. Even if they're doing hatching, they're still sort of, there's a lot of people who think of inking in the, in, in the paradigm of the way it was developed, essentially out of etching, but it, which evolved in comics into like classic comic book inking with a pen and brush, which is definitely like the, the style of inking that I first learned and tried to emulate as a young artist, trying to get into comics and illustration and stuff. I did a little painting too, but I was, I was slow to get into painting. I really wanted to work with pen and ink. And a lot of the artists I admired, a few did mixed media, so I liked experimenting with that. But most were black and white ink guys. They're the bit I missed. But that's okay, because now I can do it. So I think I'm going to do a little more hatching here. Yeah. Let's turn it upside down so I can see the shapes a little easier. I'm trying to put shadows in the crevices of the clouds. There's lights coming from the fire, right? This is kind of written over too, so I don't want to get too fussy, but I also sometimes just have to think it through and draw stuff, even if I'm going to obliterate it, so that I can see the forms. I don't see things in my head. There's a certain amount of projecting onto the page I can do, but I'm not literally seeing anything. Spell check time before I write something down and regret it. Want to buy some art? Oh, that's not what I said, but I know what I said. 
said Art. I think I actually want to do a bit of the. Yeah. And that is true. I am not trying myself, but I do own a Hawaiian shirt or two. Nice old vintage ones. That I got from David Himmel. Himmel Weathers? Something like that. Hemel jackets. He do. He does amazing jackets. I could never afford one of his leather jackets. But back in the day, he was a, a ragman, vintage clothing dealer. And my friends worked for him, hauling cloth, clothing around. I'd go to, the, to his warehouse, and he would let me pick out some choice stuff off the piles and sell it to sell it to me for cheap. And I was a very well dressed dude, thanks to occasional ventures there. I also bought clothes and kids in the market, vintage market and stuff like that. But <laughs> okay. What are you balancing on? Oh, there. What is going to be in those oil paintings? Don't know what to think about this. What will be in the painting? Oh yeah, I remember one thing I wanted to do. That's right. It came to me. I knew there was a thing I had thought about that I wanted to be in this place. And that needs a little bit of matching, but maybe less bulky. Yeah. Like a dot. Right now, actually, as much as I'm using different colors, I am doing this mainly for values. And then I'm not sure if I'll keep these exact colors when I scan it. I'm going to probably do things with that. Either make a black and white, which is nice and graphic and simple. It's going to look like wash work or graphite work. Or I might. Screw around. I don't know. We shall see. This isn't meant to be like a big deal comic, and if I publish it, it's going to be in my name, which is a black and white book. Black and white, you say? Yes, it's true. It makes it much more affordable for you. Um, and also, I think my art works good that way. Color is great, and I like doing it, and I'm glad I'll have a color cover to show off that piece I did. Um, but the cover's already done. You can look it up if you want. Um, but it, uh, it's a lot more time consuming to do stories in color, technically. And then I also don't see that that's, in order to make it really pay off, you have to do an immense amount of thinking about the narrative impact of color. At least I feel like I have to. So I end up taking just as long coloring work as I do inking and drawing it, and that's just unforgivably long.
this if I had more I wanted to be more pol political cartoony about it I'd pull out and show a, a riot with like American federal officers running around and shit <laughs> but it's all the things like what I'm actually really bothered about right now is the fact that all the shit going on and people have just sort of forgotten about the environment um, and uh, that's gonna kick us in the ass it already was, but it's just getting worse. Aren't I full of joy? Hey, look. What do you want from me? I'm not your dancing monkey. The world's a little crazy, but that's why I feel like this. That's why this cartoon is feeling me right now. That's where my vibes are at. That. There we go. Yep. Yep, with that. I'm going to add in the text now. So, uh, excuse me. I'm just planning. Above the page, where I'm going to do it. This is a Kiritaka number eight fountain brush, nice and stubby and short. That's way too big. Damn it. How will I fix this? Mm. This is how you fix it. You just work over it, figure out how to blend it in, let it dry. You know what? I'm going to switch to, especially because I did some more white out there, and I think I'll have more control over my shapes. There's some manner of sharpie in this situation. So. One of the things about being dyslexic that I like is it's fairly easy for me to write backwards. I don't know about other dyslexics if you agree, but that has always been something I find fairly like I do have to make a mental shift. It's not like you just do it. But the way I learn to write I find makes it relatively easy to do. Oh, here's a little work. That's good enough. And I could do a lot of this digitally too, but there is just something satisfying about doing it on paper in my sketchbook. Again, a lot of this has to do with the fact that that's where I learned. But I think if you are a, a digital native who's never really done sketches on paper, I encourage you to do it. It, it teaches you things about, I think I said earlier, texture and surface and media. It can then lend a lot of richness to your digital art because you 
we have ideas about how to work um, the art to get a, a result. Uh, check my spelling for a second. Make sure we're right. Oh, that was a nice pointer. So, uh, uh, it'd be kind of a purple burn. This one's a sharpie. It's actually kind of blue, but that's okay. This. Ooh, it stinks though. Hmm. Fix smalls bees and why things can I use? I forget how the flagell bee works so well. Yeah, it's okay. It'll work enough for our purposes. Be careful because the gel pen doesn't really fully dry, and I have to read it right away, away too. So I'm going to go in and beef up my lines so that they pop properly. Especially the lower ones. I don't mind if the top ones are thinner, that too is kind of cool. I want sort of a shadow cast effect. There we go. Should done. Shabang. It's an hour. Alrighty. Well, that's nice to get some art done. Um, hey there. So, hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to scan this. Think about the next thing. Maybe I'll record that too. We'll see. Check out my Patreon. Uh, you can pitch two bucks read my comics or 10 bucks and be a student um you can tailor a program to your particular needs and uh you get to spend some time with me one-on-one -on -one each month if you wish to and send me your homework for feedback which i'll do video responses look through the work and do draw overs and things um i'm enjoying that too it's fun i'm gonna probably start asking permission to post some of them on youtube if the students are cool with it uh and then by the way check it out my channel it's getting it's getting close to 10,000 I don't think that really means a whole lot but it's kind of cool I like it's neat and uh, you know I, I don't I don't make a, a, a ton of money for my videos at all either there, there are other people who have channels that are more pop culture consumption oriented um, who with 10,000 viewers who actually make a, a, a nice bit of change off of them I do not but it, I feel like it's moving there uh, and I do get like uh, 20 bucks a month or so at the moment so subscribe to my channel and like things and hit the bell bang it smash smash the bell uh, so that I need a little bell so I can ring a bell ring the bell uh, so that you get notifications and I show up in your feed and stuff and share my videos with your art friends and uh, if you want to um, check out my comics uh, go to salgoodsum.com 
or Facebook and look for Sound Good Sam, or Twitter and look for Sound Good Sam, or Patreon and look for Sound Good. I think it's just Sound Good. And why do I always blank on that? I always blank on that. Is it just Sound Good? Yes, just Sound Good. Patreon.com slash Sound Good. There will be links in the description text. Uh, I'm teaching cartooning next semester. And I'm teaching cartooning and dynamic drawing and gesture and anatomy and life studies and practice and st having st developing study habits and making comics and storytelling uh, and world building and portraiture. Probably some other things too. On Patreon, a la carte, just ask me what you want to work, work on. Um, so yeah, there we are. Okay. All right then. See you next time.